Simon Nciso is a professional basketball player in the PBA. His passion and drive both on and off the court continues to serve as an inspiration to basketball enthusiasts all over the country. In everything he does, he gives his all, and that is what makes him the inspiring individual that he is today. Hi guys and welcome to another episode of In Love With Me where we feature inspiring individuals who will share their amazing stories. I am your host, Mafe Yunan Balasco, and for this series, our topic is passion and purpose. For this episode, we have an empowered man, a professional basketball player to motivate us to take action. So without further ado, let's welcome the amazing Simon and Cecil. Hi, Simon. Hey guys, how you doing? Hello, hello. Nice hair. I was just I know. telling you. <laughs> the quarantine hair. <laughs> you do during this time. So Simon's making this trending, guys. So grow it out. Um, yeah. But, bef- you know, I'm sure you've been busy during this quarantine period. And um, before I ask you what you've been up to, can you share with everyone on how you are the empowered and inspiring man that you are today? Um, I think it comes a lot with... Uh my upbringing uh my mom and dad have always been very hard working and have instilled that in me and my sister and um from an early age they never really babied me um they always told me you know if i really want something to put my mind to it and work hard and you know ultimately whatever's coming for you or whatever blessings coming your way will come um and also just seeing them and how hard they work to to put a roof over me and my sister's head and and food on the table every day was uh truly inspiring to me i mean um i still remember the days where you know i would ask for new basketball shoes but we really didn't have the money to do to get it and um you know they would surprise me with it and you know they've always they'll always find a way to you know, kind of uh, help me and to support me in, in any way they can. So, you know, that really stuck with me and and how I am uh, how I am empowered today, uh, because you know, just living with them my whole life and um, just learning those you know true skills and and hardworking traits that they that they have instilled in me and my sister has really helped me out, you know, being out here in the Philippines alone and, you know, kind of just aspiring to make my dreams into a reality. So, um, yeah, I think it's a big part is my upbringing and who I surround myself with. So, you know, just um, bringing back to, you know, like you said, your parents were your biggest inspiration. And um, I know that you grew up in San Francisco, right? Right. Mm hmm. So with that, um, let's do a little bit of rewind. So where did basketball okay. start? Uh, was it at a young age in San Francisco? Can you share a little bit about that? Um, it was at a super young age. Um, my dad is a huge basketball fanatic. Uh, he was re- like, well, during the time I was born was like um, Jordan era. So he would be playing the games, even though I was too small or still a toddler, didn't even know what game was on. He would be watching on the couch with me. Uh, he put the basketball in my my crib and just kind of surrounded me with it. My uncles were also big time basketball players in their local barangays out here when they were still here in the Philippines. And um, growing up, I still remember this to, my, to this day because we always joke around it every time I come back home for family parties. And um, when I was younger, maybe around like six or five, just just old enough to dribble the basketball and like kind of play around. Yeah, maybe like six or eight around that era, around that age. 
my dad would always take me to his like friends or like where my uncles would always, you know, play basketball during family parties. And I would always be the kid on the side dribbling the ball like, dad, is it okay? Can I play now? Like, can I join? Can I can I come in and, and, and play with you guys? And they would be like, no, you're too small. You're going to get hurt. And I remember I would always be super mad. Like I would always have that just competitive drive to just, you know, I really I wasn't scared of anybody. I, I just wanted to go out there and compete. And um, yeah, we, we have family parties now and, and now it's just the roles are reversed. Like <laughs> they try to come in and play with me. And it's, it's just it's just no competition. It's just it, it's funny. It, it's it's funny how time goes. Um, but yeah, basketball started at a really young age and it's it's just been around my family for for a long time. My sister played basketball. My mom was into sports. She was a volleyball player. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we just come from a very sports driven family um, and a very competitive family. My dad's uh, my dad and mom are truly competitive. Uh, they're my biggest critics. So, you know, after games, even to this day, even to this day after games, they stay up late because, you know, here games would be around like 7 p.m. So it would be like 4 p.m., 4 a.m. back home. And my dad and mom will stay up and watch my games. And if, whether it's good or bad, they, you know, they especially if it's bad, they'll let me know on how <laughs> I'm doing. So it, it's cool to just see how, you know, they're, they're still out here supporting me no matter, you know, the time difference and, and things things of that sort so um yeah I, I owe a lot to them and you know like i said that's my inspiration so that's where i get my power from yeah and you're blessed you know you have parents that support you no matter what and you've obviously oh. showed them that you can make it to a level that probably was in their dreams of, of right. making it themselves so with that how i know that you went to notre dame right. and in, in um, San Francisco also. So how is right. that, um, that, how is that period? Because um, I wanna know, how did you even find out about the PBA? Right, right. So before Notre Dame, uh, my high school career, I played really well, was on like the sports center of high school like a couple of times for like player of the week. And um, I thought I was gonna get recruited. You know, D1 was like my goal. I wanna play D division one basketball play on TV and all that. Um, but, you know, with my height, it just wasn't, you know, the mold that, you know, Division One college coaches were looking for, especially in the States. It's super competitive. You know, you can't teach height. You can't teach athleticism. And, and you know, America breeds those type of players. Um, but obviously I didn't have the height, but, you know, I felt like I had the talent. I had the heart. So I just sticked with it. And um, luckily, I had a couple local junior colleges always come to my games and offering me. So I went two years, my freshman and sophomore year, at Skyline Junior College mm -hmm. and uh, alma mater of Harvey Carey. And um, that's kind of how I linked with him because one of his best friends were were always in my ear about the P or about just playing in the Philippines, whether it was college or, or the PBA. And I would play in local Phil Am tournaments every weekend. And, and everybody would just ask me like, are you going to go to the Philippines? Like, what's your plan? I'm, I'm just like, man, I'm just trying, I'm trying to make it to D one right now. Like I, I, I really don't have that in my sights right now, but you know, so that's how I really heard about the PBA was just through those little Filipino tournaments. Cause obviously we all know Filipinos are super basketball fans and, uh, especially the Filipinos in the States, it, it doesn't change. So, um, and that's when I started to link up with, you know, and started to network with other guys who have already been out here, like Nick Belasco, your husband, and um, <laughs> Harvey Carey, of course, um, Jeff Cariasso. I also knew Josh Urbistondo because I worked out with him before he got drafted and I was still in high school. So, um, yeah, that, that was a huge huge part and then um after my two years at skyline i i got i got recruited by notre dame because i played really well in their open gyms over the summer and my time there was kind of ups there was a lot of ups and downs uh, i'm not gonna lie uh not my whole journey to the pba 
hasn't really been all sunshine and flowers. It's been a lot of rough patches, but um, I feel like it's made me a better man and made me a tougher man mentally. Um, but yeah, Notre Dame was a cool experience because uh, my junior year I was, I was playing uh, not as much as I wanted to, but I was playing enough to where I, I can make an impact on the team. And um, I played pretty well my junior year, but my senior year was my breakout year. And, um, um, you know, life throws you curveballs all the time. And um, I was, you know, coming off a, um, a heartbreak and I just put all my time into basketball and all my frustration and anger to basketball leading up to my senior year. And um, all that work that I put in, you know, is just a testament of what my, my parents were always teaching me. Like if you put in the work, ultimately the blessings will come towards you. And um, I played a great season, great senior year. Unfortunately, we didn't make it to playoffs, but in our conference, the Pac West, we get to play five Hawaii teams. So I kind of had like a two week vacation in Hawaii just playing basketball. So I wasn't mad at it. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was such a fun ride, such, such an experience, met a lot of people. Um, and that's when I, uh, I started, you know, after my senior year, I started making this highlight tape with all my film. I gathered all my film from my coaches and my friend Jeff. Uh, he made me a highlight tape. It's still on YouTube. You guys could go check it out. Um, and that's what I just kept sending out to people like Nick and Harvey and Jeff. And, you know, uh, you know, suddenly I would get, you know, messages back from them and kind of, you know, feeling kind of starstruck a little bit because I know that playing the PBA and this is what, you know, I wanted to play professionally because this was the next best thing after the NBA. I knew that the NBA was going to be a long stretch for me. I didn't really have an opportunity. So um, the PBA was like my MBA and um, talking to these guys and, you know, their advice on, you know, what my mindset should be and, and how I should get ready was, uh, you know, also a huge help. I think I got uh, a couple steps ahead of other Phil Ams because some Phil Ams didn't know, you know, how to present yourself, how to not come off as to my album, stuff like that. Um, and, you know, Nick and Harvey and Jeff and Josh and Saul, and, you know, Joe and all of them, Gabe, Chris Ross, they all have played a huge part in my success in the league and all their advice um, really helped me out into the player that I am today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talked about that, like um, <clears throat> I was sharing with you that I'm sure um, the guys that you mentioned, you know, they were they came at a time, especially, you know, the they might get mad at me. The older guys, you know, of course, my, my husband and, you know, right. um, that era, they had the biggest challenge. And I, I feel as though maybe, oh, for sure. um, the reason why that they wanted to make sure that you were OK is because they kind of did the hard work already, you know. Right. So right. with that, you know, did you find coming to the Philippines made it easier for you and made you feel more at home um, compared to what they shared with their stories? Um, it did and it didn't. I'll tell you why it did. It did because I knew how to go about things the right way. Um, it didn't because the summer that I decided that I was just going to move out here and try to play in the Philippines, uh, I had no agent. Um, I was literally going off of what uh, Coach Jeff, Coach Jeff Curry also was telling me documents I needed, and I was back and forth the SF Embassy or immigration over there, and I was just trying to get my Philippine passport and, and all that. And they were they were telling me like, yeah, that's all you need. And so when I come to the Philippines, or even before that, I was working tournaments back home for money. My best friend's dad owns an AAU basketball club called the Bulldogs. And I would work for him over this over the weekends for money. And I saved up enough money to buy a one way ticket. And I slapped that one way ticket on my mom's dresser. And I said, look, I'm leaving here at this date. And she's like, you're serious. Do you seriously want to do this? And I'm like, 
yeah, I mean, I made a decision at a young age that this is something that I really wanted to do and I have an opportunity to do it. So I don't want to live life with any regrets. And I just booked that one way ticket. And this is why I say it was and it wasn't. It was, it, it was because I knew how to present myself, but it wasn't because I wasn't prepared to see um, some of the things that I've seen here in the Philippines, like the poverty, the way of living. You know, I I was so privileged out here in the in the states, you know, to where it's like fresh air, you know, paper towels in the bath or toilet paper in the bathroom, you know, stuff like that. And it really humbled me and really appreciated my parents even more because um, when I when I decided to take that plane ticket, it was actually let's say the second time I went out of state or even out of, or the first time I went out of country and it's the first time I've ever visited the Philippines. So I literally did not know what the Philippines was going to look like. I thought it was going to be like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, like the teleseries my mom watches on TFC <laughs> and I'm just like, what is this jungle out there? Or is it just like, you know, like I, I really didn't know what to, what to expect. And then when I got here, it's a city and, you know, there's there's kids asking you for money, like literally walking up to you and like knocking on your window and asking you for money and all that. And I was just like ultra shocked. And yeah, I understand. To, I understood Tagalog because my mom and dad would speak to me at the house, but I never really engaged in conversation in Tagalog. So everything was English. And when I first moved out here, everybody was really intimidated with my English. I don't know, it might be the deep voice or maybe I'm speaking too fast. Um, but yeah, it was just a huge culture shock. And if I didn't play basketball, I I probably would have went home. Um, Cause I, the first couple of months were just tough. I mean, I mean the whole, the first year was just tough. Like, uh, just going to different tryouts and trying to show showcase my talent to these coaches who already have a mindset on who they're going to get in the draft because he went to school here and they don't know anything about me. Um, so it's, it was just tough. It was just tough to kind of like stay mentally strong. And then on top of that, you get homesick, you know, just a lot of time away from family it's not like, you know, I'm in another state. I could just book a flight back home. Like as a 16 hour flight back home. Like, um, luckily we had FaceTime, like you said, back in Nick and Harvey and Jeff's era, there wasn't anything. Maybe it was just emails, I think. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, so I was just really, I, I, I mean, um, was luckier than them to just have FaceTime and be able to just call, um, but yeah, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. I was carrying pocket Wi-Fi's everywhere. Like uh, I was loading up the pocket Wi-Fi's every five minutes. Like it was just, it was a tough, it was a tough first year. <clears throat> but, you know, seeing how Nick was and his success and Harvey and his success and Coach Jeff and his success and all of the Brotherhood guys, Josh, Joe, Chris, Saul, Gabe, and all their success and just being around them like literally going to their homes and having Thanksgiving or Christmas and seeing these big homes and like, you know, just being like, wow, this is what's going to, this is what my life is going to be in a couple of years in the league. Like that just drove me to work even harder and stick it through. Um, I feel like I'm a very determined person. If I really want something, I can go get it. Um, I've never had a problem with sticking with something until I finish it. So, and I've never been a quitter. So, um, yeah, that, like those guys played a huge part in me staying and not giving up on this dream because I was literally maybe like a month away from like saying, man, I'm just going to go home. Like mm -hmm. I was living in a studio, like like a box studio where there's a bed, a hole in the wall where you put your AC and then the bathroom uh, was like connected to the toilet. So like when you took a shower, like the whole <laughs> floor is wet. Like it's, it was just like something totally, like I've lived on my own. Like I've went to college, did the dorm thing and 
yeah, like that's a, that's an experience itself, but this was a whole different experience. Like, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, you're getting paid 15,000 pesos. Rent is nine pesos. You got 6,000 pesos to, you know, kind of survive the month. And yeah, mm -hmm. it was just, like I said, this, it hasn't really, it, not all of it has been sunshine and yeah. flowers. But then again, Simon, you've been in the league for five years. Uh, I mean, that's a great success already. Um, I totally understand where you're coming from because just like you, I went through the same boat. Um, right. But I'm still here. You know, after so many years, things happen. Like you said, when you work hard, the blessings will come. When you respect people, you know, the universe will will, will shower you with goodness. And for you, right. I've every time we're, we're around you, Simon, you're always – happy you've got this positive like glow and it just you know it rubs off through everyone and you know i appreciate that because just having heard your story i get where we all relate to each other you know we right, respect right. the story that we've been through and yes we might have been somewhat spoiled living um you know outside of the philippines but there's got to be a calling god put something in our hearts to come back here mm -hmm. yes to to follow a dream, but at the same time, you know, just with your transparency here, you're inspiring people. Like you said, right. it's not easy. Nothing's easy in life, you know, right, especially exactly. if you're trying to dream big. So, right. you know, having said that, being in the PBA for five years, being with um, several <clears throat> teams, I mean, I'm pretty sure that every single time you had to move, um, even moving from, from San Francisco, you were, you know, you had to stay focused. You had to make sure that you were always motivated. So what would be that pattern? What would be that, I guess, habit or ritual that you kind of like egg yourself on? Like, come on, Simon, got to do this. Um, I don't think I have a ritual, but um, just every day trying to stay in touch with my parents. Uh, you know, they're not getting any younger. So uh, I want to you know, spend as much time as I can because, you know, I'm I'm out the country, so can't spend as that quality time with them. So me just being on the phone with them every day, checking up on them uh, really eases my mind to where it's like, OK, you know, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Right. And then another blessing came into my family about a year ago. Uh, my sister gave birth to my nephew and um, now he's like a year and three months and he's just starting to pick up uh the bat like the little basketball around the house and like dunking the ball in this court that I got him. So um yeah, I just been super like scheduling like FaceTimes and stuff like with that with my sister and just trying to keep in touch and and um you know it sucks that I won't be able to get those years back where um I could be with them to like kind of like you know, like how my dad was with me, like, hey, man, this is how you shoot, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, my sister and uh, her boyfriend are doing a great job. And, um, yeah, I'm just excited to see how my nephew grows up. It's just I feel like it's yeah, I feel like he's my own. So, um, yeah, it's just crazy to see like videos that they send me every day. Like he's just growing so fast. Mm -hmm. He's like he's like a year and three months and he looks like a four year old. <laughs> so, well, yeah, there you go. That's your mini me in a way. You know, right, right. I'm sure he's going to look up to his uncle who's, who's doing it. You are doing it. You're, you're, you're paving the way. And um, I think I have someone here who's also proud of you and wants to say hi. Okay. Hello. What's up, young fella? Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, what's up? How man? you doing? You like the Rico yeah, Squad? Man. Yeah, hey, I like the hair. When when I logged in, I was like, "Dang, look at that hair!" <laughs> it's that quarantine, man. That quarantine got you. Didn't get me though. I'm, I'm too scared <laughs> to go to a barber, man. You got it easy. You saving money. Hey, man. I just wanted to log in real quick and say that I'm proud of you. Um, you know, I got to see your development from from uh, what is it, D League, right, all the way up until. Coaching you at Phoenix, which was was super fun, right. uh, all the way to doing your thing with Alaska, and then and then now moving through the league. And you're with Talking Text, right? Yeah, Talking so, Text now. I'm just proud of you, man. Like, 
I always tell the young players, you know, if if you want to make it, like guys that are aspiring to go to the PBA one day. Right, right. If you want to make it, you're going to have to go through so many hardships along the way and so many trials and you're going to have to like really struggle before you get a chance to make it. And, and I've seen you power through all those years up to this point. So right. uh, you're, you're the example that I use to a lot of players when they, they think they're going to make it big. I'm like, you, you look at Simon and CISO, like, are you willing to take that path? Cause that's the path that it's going to take for you to be succeed, successful. All right, man. I appreciate that brother. It means a lot. Hey, Simon, yeah, how man. was it um, being coached by Nick? It was super fun, man. Like, <laughs> it was super fun. Look at that. Oh, look at that picture. I know. So much passion. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But that that's what it is. Like, I feel like that's why me and Nick got along so well, because we just have this passion for the game. And we speak the same language. You know, a lot of – I would like to say, like, a lot of, like, local Filipinos – they don't like when guys are like singling you out or like saying like, Hey, like, this is what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I respond well to that. And, and I know Nick is like that. And I know it comes from a place of, he wants you to be better. And I respect that. And I love that. So when he coached me, I was just all about like, what's up, Nick? Like you going in early? Like, so we're going to get shots. So we're going to work out. Like, you know, Nick, Nick could tell you, like, we always stay early mornings and like, you know, he'd work on my post game, like just different aspects of my game that, you know, I need to develop. And, oh, man, it was fun. And then we had Josh, who was another Bay Area guy. So we was just all bayed out <laughs> over there. And it was and it was cool, man. It, it was like a cool transition from like a second phase of my my rookie year. So it was cool. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, one thing that I really tried to work on was Simon because he's got this really big head. So <laughs> put him down into the post. And show him how to use it. To you know what I'm advantage. saying? Like he does, he does like that. Though. Everyone moves out the way. A bunch you know of little guys that can't handle that. So, but it worked and out. My head, and then my head fake is crazy. <laughs> hey, with all that hair now, you can start doing this, and it's all delayed. It's shaking. It. Look at it. And that's your that's his move. We call him. What do we call him? We call him uh, side side view mirror because he always do this a little bit of side view. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was a good time. Moves. You know what uh, I'm saying? Fun, and, and everybody knew it was coming, but they couldn't stop it. I don't know why. Couldn't stop it. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. You you go to your strengths. Right. You know, that's what, that's what I tell know. players, too. Like, for example, Rudy Hatfield was probably one of the hardest guys for me to defend. Mm. And everyone in the whole world knows what he's going to do. He's going to catch it, and he's going to rip through and go left strong. And he's right-handed. Right. But you still you couldn't stop it though. He's gonna go left and he's gonna go strong <laughs> and you can't stop it. So you gotta play to your strengths. How are how are you right. liking uh the new the new setup? I know you guys oh, are I still like getting it. through this quarantine, but I'm looking forward to seeing you do your thing there. Right. I well we practiced for three months and I was like getting in the groove. Like I, I liked it over there. It was a lot different from Alaska because Alaska's like a lot of ball movement and stuff and you know, talking touch was like, hey, man, you open, shoot, it, shoot. And I was like, uh, all right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was just it was like a, maybe like a week transition. And then I started getting comfortable. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a stranger to, you know, getting traded. So it was a it was just like a, another day in the office kind of thing. But How I like many it over years have you been cool. in the league? Five. Five. Yeah, see, you, you're not even there yet. Like, right. I mean, I've seen guys look at Chris Ross, another prime example. Mm -hmm. I've seen him go through all these struggles playing with coaches that didn't understand his game. When right. he finally found that niche, I mean, look at him now. He's one of the best players in the league. Right. So you're you're right on the verge of that. So I'm excited to watch you do it over there at Talking Text. You got a nice. Yeah, I, I feel like Coach Mark. He really messes with me. So like, I have a. I think this is like the first time I I had a real like relationship with my coach. Cause he's very straight up, you know, he doesn't be around the bush. He'll tell you how it is. And, you know, I, I like that. Uh, I'd rather have that, I respect that more. So, um, yeah, I, I can't like, you're excited. I'm, I'm super excited as well, man. I can't wait. 
We're cheering for you. I appreciate you guys. You know it's all love when we see each other. Mm -hmm. Hey, one thing people might not know, me and Simon went to the same college. I don't know if you guys touched yep. on that. Notre Dame. I was going, I was going to, and then uh, kind of veered off on like how you like yeah. you know gave me advice on how to like present myself and not you know come off too yabong and, and <laughs> how you got to how you got to. Um, you know, so, of, how do you both feel about your school and what's is it still there? <laughs> I heard it got down. closed down. Yeah, yeah that's what I heard. Closed, yeah. So the tradition began. That was our slogan when back in was it ninety two. The tradition begins, mm -hmm. and that tradition is over now. <laughs> and then, and then uh, I followed their athletic team IG right, and they came out with like this top five, like their starting five best basketball players who came through Notre Dame, right? And I was like, dang, they didn't get me at the point guard spot. I was hot. <laughs> I was mad. I was like, they had some dude at like 1962. Like it was an old picture. <laughs> I was like, oh man. Well, well, regardless, sure guys, both of you have made it here and inspiring everyone here. So, you know, um, Simon, I have to thank you for inspiring my kids because they look up to you apart from their dad, of course. You know, thank you for that. Um, keep doing of what you're course. doing. Um, maybe last thing before we wrap up. Nick, do you have anything else to say? I have a last one more question for Simon. Uh, um, you know, I've, I've coached Simon. I've, I've been friends with Simon for a while, but I know he's a hard worker. What I want to know, is what I ask everyone when, when I get a chance to come on Mafe's show is, what are your core values? Like, what are the, the core beliefs and values that, that really, every time you wake up in the morning, you're thinking, and you know that you're gonna do these things that, that pretty much guarantees your success? Um, I think that having a routine is a big core value. Um, every day I wake up at 5.30 and get a workout in with Saul and Joe and then right after that workout, I get my shots up and it's just a continuous thing. And you see results, you know, from the constant work you put in. So I think it's you have a routine, your consistency to that routine. And mm -hmm. how did de how determined are you to kind of just keep pushing to that next level of your game and never being content with where you're at? I feel like that's how that's what has, you know, kind of um, gave me, you know, that okay. the journey that I've had right so far is just, you know, I'm always a student of the game and just trying to get better each and every conference I play. So, yeah, I think those three things, just having a routine, being consistent with that routine, and then just finding out different ways to, you know, kind of just – flourish your game to that next level to where it's you never content to where you're at. And I feel like all the greats had that in common, you know, to the Kobe's, to the LeBron's, to the Jordan's, you know, every year they came out with something different, whether it was, you know, left hand finishes or, you know, fadeaway jumpers or, you know, um, extending their range out to the three. It's just, you know, you just got to keep adding on to your game especially at when you reach that high, the higher level because, you know, you're in the league and, you know, everybody's a professional. So what's what, what are you doing to kind of not only keep your spot in the league, but to be ready to, you know, stamp your legacy on the league? Like, you know, what, what, are, you, what are you doing every day to kind of, you know, solidify your name in this league? I feel like that's that's what I'm always looking at is like, all right, I had a great season with Alaska. Now this new chapter with Talking Text, okay, how can I help them and how can I get that championship now? Because I've got a taste of the championship and lost, but how do I get over that that lesson that I learned and kind of taking that next step to where I, I, I can achieve that goal that I've always wanted, which is to win a, a finals? Were you in any finals? Say that again. So, did you make, did you it make it to any finals, finals appearances with Alaska? 
Yeah, the one with Mike Harris. That was my first ever NBA Finals. I mean, NBA PBA Finals. <laughs> and uh, man, it was it was a great feeling. And I, I think that was like probably one of my best uh, conferences I've ever played. I was shooting the ball really well. Uh, we had a great import in Mike Harris. Me and Chris Banchero were were really playing well together. And um, man, I, I thought we were really going to win one because. I had a lot of I had a lot of confidence in Mike, uh, just the guy that he is, and uh, what all the work that he put in, just staying like literally like pulling guys that that didn't stay after practice to work on their game, and literally forcing them to stay in the gym with him and work on their game. And that conference, everybody played really well, and it just shows you like if you put in the work in, man. That's just all it takes to be successful. Is that work you put in? Is the work? Is the work you're gonna get? As results. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the key. Right. You, you get what you give. You know, you right. put that work in. You're gonna get it back. You're gonna get results. Uh, one thing that I see with you is that you got some good mentors around you. You know, you, you've always been around the guys like Saul, Chris right. Ross, Joe DeVance, <clears throat> and that's key. I mean. Now you're going to be on Talk and Text with, with Harvey there. So you right. got good mentors on your team as well as off the court. And uh, that, exactly. that's something that, that I think is helping you big time. Oh, it's it's been helping me th- throughout this whole journey in the the Philippines. Like I was just telling Mafe in the beginning of this, uh, the show was like, it's all about like my upbringing with my parents and what they've instilled in me. And then the people I surround myself with. And like you said, I'm around really great people. So can't ask for anything better. Mm-hmm. And me, lastly, I, I do want to ask you to <clears throat> please share your advice to, let's say, aspiring Filipino Americans or the youth here in the Philippines on how um, to stay motivated and how to be inspired to follow your footsteps. What they what should they prepare? I mean, especially at this time, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they have a lot of time on their hands. What should they be doing to get them ahead of everybody else? Right. Um, I think with me, I know that, you know, times are rough right now and I don't know if certain places are on lockdown or what, um, but um, as a competitor and as a, you know, a hardworking morale type of guy, I I do feel like there's always a way to kind of, you know, work on something. Like um, when I was younger, I never really had like a basketball court that I could just go to. So what I used to do was I just used to dribble the ball everywhere I went, whether it was the mall, to class, to the corner store to get candy or, you know, just little things like that. You could always just be dribbling the ball, working on your handle, getting that handle tight. Um, yeah, and I just used to surround myself with the basketball. I used to sleep with the basketball. I used to just be around basketball with my dad. Uh, just little things like that, you know, get creative. And, you know, I feel like you find motivation in that. Like, I always find motivation in things that I don't do very well. So if I don't do something really well, like I try to work on it and, you know, try to get over that obstacle. And that's kind of what builds my motivation. And, these rough times, like, uh, uh, you know, these first what couple months of quarantine were on lockdown. I couldn't really shoot a basketball. And then now that I have a court over here, like the first day I shot a basketball, it was terrible. So that was my motivation. I'm going to get better at shooting again every single day. So I just kept on getting my shots up, getting my shots up, getting my shots up. And like I said, there's, there's always ways. Don't ever limit yourself in anything in life and basketball, um, you know, always reach for the stars. And I think the biggest advice I always give people, uh, I think Nick can attest to this too, is man, don't let anybody tell you, you can't do anything. Like I, I always tell people that like I've had coaches that, or even like teachers that say like, Oh, you're not going to make it. You know, you know what percentages people who play professional basketball, like, and you're not tall, like, you're not going to make it. But, I mean, you know, like, with hard work and 
you know, those three things that I said, a routine, consistency, and, you know, that just that strive to be better each and every day, it goes a long way, man. Um, and I feel like that's the biggest thing I can give to the youth is just that ex my experience and, you know, kind of my work ethic on, you know, how to go about things and how to just stay consistent. I feel like consistency is a big part on my success. Thanks for that, Simon. You know, everything you said is so inspiring. And I hope everybody who's tuned in, especially the youth, can follow um, Simon <clears throat> and, and the, the things that he's doing in his life. And I'm sure Simon is more than happy to answer any more questions or even give advice to, to anyone who reaches out to him. So I'll make sure his right. social media handle is here on the caption so that you can reach him and also follow what he's been up to. And I know you have um, an event coming up and your game's coming up. Yeah. Do you want to invite everyone? Um, so I don't know when the PBA is starting, but I can tell you guys that we will be starting practices, I think mid August, maybe. Um, it's still kind of up there. People still got to do swap tests and stuff like that. So uh, I hope all you PBA fans can just stay patient with us. We're trying our best to get back on that court and, you know, bring you guys that competitive spirit again. Um, I also am in, I picked up a hobby of streaming video, uh, playing a video game called Call of Duty. And there's a big tournament with a bunch of your favorite PBA players and favorite celebrities uh, ran by uh, Slam PH and Goat Academy. So, um, I'll give Mafe my Twitch account and I'll send you the link to kind of follow the tournaments on Saturday at 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Philippine time. So if you guys want to catch, you know, some of your favorite PBA players streams uh, while they while they play the game and kind of just talk and have fun and and just compete again. It's kind of like our our way of getting that competition uh, flow going again. So. Um, yeah, if you guys are interested in that, I'll give my favorite my Twitch account and uh, you guys can follow the tournament on Saturday there. Um, I also am partnered up with uh, an organization called PSA, which is Pino Sports Academy. It's uh, it's um, located in Chicago and um, it's a Filipino Rand Academy where they do clinics and kind of camps to help uh, kids around with, um, you know, just developing their game. And uh, the guy who runs it also went to Notre Dame Dino Mori, he's a Filipino. Um, and we kind of just kept in touch and he's been a huge fan of what I've been doing. And uh, he's, uh, he's actually one of the PTs and works with the Chicago Bulls right now. So um, he asked me to partner up with him and I, I ultimately loved what they were doing. So if you guys can follow their Instagram account, it is PSA Academy or Pino Sports Academy on Instagram. And um, yeah, that would be a huge help because uh, they're partnered with a lot of great people. Um, they actually have a women's part in it as well. Um, they're partnered with a lead ambassador. So it's me and um, uh, a WNBA player from the Chicago Sky. So if you guys are interested in following that, uh, go check out their Instagram page. We would uh, greatly appreciate it. And uh, Mafe and Nick, thank you again for having me and giving me this opportunity to share my journey and my story. It's always a, a great time seeing you and the family um, congratulations on another blessing. And, um, you know, you guys have always been role models to me, um, being out here alone and, you know, kind of growing, I'm about to hit 30 and, you know, family and all this stuff starts coming into the picture. And, you know, you guys always had such a great tightly knit family. Whenever I see you guys at other family parties, you guys come in with a full on squad. So, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of something that, you know, I kind of aspire to have someday. So thank you guys again, man. I love you guys. For sure. Simon, you're welcome to babysit anytime. Yeah. Uh, to practice. 
<laughs> but yes, we're also grateful for you uh, being on this platform to inspire others. And for sure, I'll have you back on when you are a champion. And I'm claiming it. You're going to be a champion for many, many years. And Nick and I will be here to mentor you and support you. And of course, you know, my kids look up to you. So they'll be following your journey no matter what. Um, Nick, you have anything else to say before I wrap up? Yeah, if you need any pointers on how to have babies, just ask me. <laughs> if you want a boy, I know how to do that. If you want a girl, I can show you that one too. No, you cannot show I got just... you covered, man. On and off okay. the court. All right. You guys All can right. have a right. I'm going to text office. you later. <laughs> anyway, so for everyone who's tuned in, thank you so much. We want to say thank you to Manel and Harvey's also watching. He says, nice hair. Um, and Simon, thank you so much. You know, with everything you've shared here, I know um, the youth and everybody who's tuned in is inspired and motivated to get up and have no regrets and just work hard so that the blessings will come. So with that, guys, actions speak louder than words. And thank you for tuning in in this episode of In Love With Me. Thank you, brother. Thank you for watching and love of me series.